woke up this morning to this magnificent view of Himalayas <clears throat> after rain. The air is so clear and the beauty here is it's so gorgeous it brings me to tears sometimes. Just exquisite. Namaste. So today I want to continue from last time uh, talking about the three stages of bhakti. Uh, you've all seen our chart with the stages of the spiritual path and consciousness. And now I want to focus in, zoom in on the bhakti portion of the path and uh, bring in material from the bhakti shastras and specifically Srila Rupa Goswami's book, his excellent book, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the nectarian ocean of bhakti. So, I want to illustrate with another chart <laughs> the basic categories of bhakti and levels of development and realization and their symptoms and qualities. Uh, and, and this, of course, is preparation leading up to the discussion of Mahabhava. Uh, but because Mahabhava is such an elevated and complicated a phenomenon, we need to establish the ontology first. So that's what we're going to go into now. The first stage is called sadhana bhakti, devotional service in practice. Now, this is not really pure bhakti. It's called, it's mishra bhakti. Huh? Bhakti mixed with karma yoga. Or karma yoga performed with the aim of reaching the stage of bhakti. It's not really bhakti because it's also called vaidhi bhakti, which means under rules and regulations of Vedas. So rules and regulations are not love. <laughs> bhakti means love. And love has to be spontaneous. It has to spring spontaneously from the contemplation of the excellent qualities of the beloved, which, of course, in this case, is a form of God or goddess. Uh, there is one God, Brahman, but many forms. Uh, Shiva, Vishnu, Krishna, Narayan, Narayani, <laughs> Shakti, Kundalini, so many male and female deities. So, uh, when one contemplates the, their qualities, one is inspired, and love springs automatically. Uh, but even in devotional service in practice, the first quality is kleshagni, gives relief from all kinds of material distress. How is that? Uh, we're just doing some spiritual contemplation and, and worship. How can it give us relief from material distress? Well, because another quality is that it gives spiritual pleasure. See, we're in so much trouble in this material world because we seek pleasure from objects that can't really give it <laughs> or who only give temporary pleasure. But we want unconditional pleasure. We want pleasure always. So we're always frustrated when these material objects don't deliver that. But the uh, spiritual pleasure of bhakti does. So immediately when we connect with God, this is called yoga, uh, connecting with God, um, we feel this spiritual pleasure and it just annihilates all these material desires, makes them irrelevant. 
And the next quality is Shubhada, cause of all auspiciousness. You know, like some rock star once said, nobody gets out of here alive. This world is a world of tragedy. It's actually a tragic comedy. Huh? Because here are all these people running around trying to do the impossible. They're trying to enjoy the unenjoyable. They want to live forever in a world that's strictly temporary. So, to get out is the most auspicious thing. Liberation, moksha, even mukti is a very desirable thing. And devotional service can deliver that. Now, the next stage of devotion is called bhava bhakti. And this is devotional service in ecstasy, spontaneous devotional service. Now, this is beyond rules and regulations. Now, if you talk to the people, you know, who are like uh, commercial bhakti salesmen, <laughs> they'll tell you, this is very, very advanced. Huh? Nonsense. I've seen even young children in spontaneous bhakti. So it's not about following the rules to perfection, huh? as some ill-informed and ill-motivated people will try to tell you. Uh, it's about transcending the rules altogether and simply following the heart. Once the heart is purified, <clears throat> once the desires are purified, and only God is important. Service to God manifests automatically. And that's the beginning of all auspiciousness, of all good things. And then, Shudurlabha means pure devotional ecstasy is rarely achieved. Most people get stuck on the rules and regulations because nobody can follow them properly. <laughs> No one can execute them perfectly in Kali Yuga. So, what is the point of them then? Because you can't win at that game of perfecting all the rules. <laughs> it's not possible. But trying, making the effort to perfect those rules purifies us of the things that keep us from realizing our spontaneous love. So, when we understand this and we reach inside and find out what is our true desire, uh, what form of Godhead do we truly love, who is our Ishta Devata or our principal deity, then that love can manifest. And that's the beginning of all auspiciousness. And then Moksha Lagutakrita. Pure devotees deride even the conception of liberation. Now, the word lagu takrita, lagu means light, as in not heavy. <laughs> Guru means heavy, lagu means light. So they make light of it, like, ah, that moksha, it's not such a big deal. Huh? It's not that they actually deride it, it means they've already attained it. So to them, it's not a big thing. To reach this stage, you have to already be liberated. And liberation is actually not that difficult to obtain. It's not sudur labaha. It's, it's easier. I mean, if I can attain it, anybody can attain it. And, and now a second student of mine has attained at least first path enlightenment. That's two within one month. And both by taking mushrooms, <laughs> or while taking mushrooms. See, the mushrooms are a cognitive enhancer, a mental amplifier. So if you go in with the mindset of, I'm going to meditate and realize the absolute, then they can help you. If you go in with the mindset they're like, whoa, I'm going to party and have a good time. Well, you might do that, but you're not going to get enlightened. They're just a tool 
So anyway, those who are already enlightened are qualified to practice this spontaneous bhakti in ecstasy. And then there's prema bhakti. Prema bhakti is the pure love of Godhead. Its main quality is sandrananda visheshatma, gives transcendental pleasure. This cannot be described, although we're going to try to describe some of the categories of devotional symptoms. Uh, what can't be described is the pleasure that this brings, because it's transcendental. It's beyond everything, beyond mind, beyond words, beyond uh, any conceptions. So it's something that has to be experienced. And once you experience that, you don't want anything else. And finally, Sri Bhagavat Dakarshini. This is the only way to attract the attention of God or goddess, whichever uh, deity that we choose to worship. My Adi Guru, Srila Prabhupada, once said, don't do this devotional service to try to see God. Huh? A lot of people are doing all kinds of puja, all kinds of worship and so on to be able to see God. But he says, that's a waste of time. Don't try to see God. Act in such a way that God wants to see you. When you've got God's attention, you've done something really special. So this is the real aim of bhakti. And when you reach this pure bhakti, then you get God's attention <laughs> more than attention. You get personal association. God or goddess, in my case, for example, goddess uh, will become your personal friend. Huh? Will become intimately involved in your life. Will show up in your dreams and talk to you and do all kinds of activities with you in the subtle form. And, of course, the most beautiful and ecstatic realizations of the reality of spiritual existence, uh, these come automatically along with this realization of prema bhakti, pure bhakti. So if you want to know uh, what are the enlightened beings doing after they attain moksha, oneness with Brahman, aham brahmasmi, huh? then what to do? Well, the answer is bhakti. Not ordinary bhakti, and certainly not religious rules and regulations, so-called bhakti. That's for beginners. But the prema bhakti, the pure bhakti, the totally ecstatic, <laughs> unconditional, unlimited, uh, totally amazing, <laughs> the amazing, blissful bhakti. This is the true aim of life and is beyond even enlightenment. Uh -huh. So uh, this is the science that we're going to be discussing in this series, which will lead you to the ultimate perfection of spiritual life. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung.